My dear listeners, God has a secret message for you today so don't miss this important message, watch this message till the end, God says, in our human life, it is important to remember that we should never suppress or silence others, nor should we intimidate or force someone to act out of fear. The Bible teaches us that every person is created in the image of God, Genesis 1 verse 27, and thus, everyone deserves respect, dignity, and freedom. Suppressing others or controlling them through fear goes against the core teachings of Jesus, which center on love, compassion, and mutual respect. When we silence someone or force them to act against their will, we not only harm them emotionally and spiritually, but we also damage our own soul. In Matthew 7 verse 12, Jesus teaches the golden rule, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. This calls us to treat others with the same kindness and respect that we desire for ourselves. Forcing others to work through fear or intimidation is not the way of God. Instead, we are encouraged to lead with love and humility. Ephesians 4 verses 2 to 3 urges us to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. When we lead with love and understanding, we create an environment of trust and cooperation, rather than one of fear. With God's blessings, we can live in peace, uplifting others rather than oppressing them. And in doing so, we fulfill God's will to love and respect all His creation. God says, in our human lives, we are often faced with situations where we may feel tempted to silence others, suppress their voices, or use fear to compel them into action. These behaviors may seem effective in the short term, but they contradict the teachings of Jesus Christ and lead to long-term damage to our relationships, our spirit, and our connection with God. Jesus consistently taught against oppression, fear, and force, emphasizing love, humility, and service to one another. One of the foundational principles in the Bible is that every human being is created in the image of God, Genesis 1 verse 27. This gives each person inherent worth and dignity. To suppress or silence another person is to ignore the God-given value that they hold. Jesus treated everyone, regardless of social status, background, or beliefs, with respect and compassion. His life was a testament to the idea that each person has something valuable to contribute, and by silencing them, we diminish the image of God in them. When we attempt to silence others or diminish their voices, we are essentially ignoring the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself, Mark 12 verse 31. In doing so, we not only harm them but also harm our relationship with God. Love requires that we listen to and respect others, even when their views or behaviors differ from our own, when we suppress others, we may believe that we are gaining control or avoiding conflict. But in reality, we are creating division and resentment. Jesus taught that true leadership and influence come not from power or dominance but from servanthood. He said, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, Matthew 20 verse 26. By trying to silence others, we reject this model of leadership and create a cycle of mistrust and fear, suppressing others can also lead to spiritual harm. By refusing to listen or by devaluing someone else's perspective, 
we shut ourselves off from growth and understanding. Proverbs 18 verse 13 says, To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. When we refuse to listen, we cut ourselves off from the wisdom and experiences that others can offer. This behavior can lead to arrogance and spiritual pride, both of which are contrary to the humility Jesus modeled during his time on earth. Moreover, silencing others can lead to a breakdown in relationships, whether in our families, workplaces, or communities. Healthy relationships are built on communication, mutual respect, and trust. When one person seeks to dominate or silence another, it creates an imbalance of power that erodes the trust necessary for meaningful connections. Jesus sought to reconcile people to each other and to God, always seeking peace and understanding. Silencing others only creates division, which stands in opposition to the work of reconciliation that Jesus calls us to pursue. Jesus repeatedly told his followers to fear not, Matthew 10 verse 31, and demonstrated throughout his life that love is far more powerful than fear. Fear may lead people to act in the short term, but it ultimately leads to resentment, anxiety, and a lack of genuine commitment. When we use fear to control or manipulate others, we rely on tactics that Jesus consistently rejected. In contrast, love has the power to transform hearts and minds. The Bible tells us that there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear, 1 John 4 verse 18. Jesus' teachings emphasize the power of love to overcome fear, division, and hatred. His ultimate sacrifice on the cross was the greatest demonstration of love, offering freedom and redemption to all who believe in Him. When we attempt to control others through fear, we fail to trust in the transformative power of love. Fear can coerce actions, but it cannot change hearts. In contrast, when we lead with love, we give others the space to grow, to reflect, and to choose goodness for themselves. Jesus modeled this throughout his ministry, offering grace and truth in love, allowing people the freedom to follow him or walk away, Jesus Christ's ministry was based on inviting others into a relationship with him, never forcing or coercing anyone. In Revelation 3 verse 20, he says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. This invitation respects the freedom and dignity of the individual. Jesus does not force his way into anyone's life but offers an open invitation for those who are willing to listen and follow him. In contrast, when we use force, intimidation, or coercion to get others to do what we want, we violate their God-given freedom. This is contrary to the way Jesus approached people, offering them a choice without compulsion. Coercion may result in temporary compliance, but it leads to deeper resentment, rebellion, and ultimately, broken relationships. Instead of using fear or coercion, Jesus calls us to inspire others through love, humility, and service. In John 13 verses 14 to 15, after washing his disciples' feet, Jesus says, Now that I, your Lord and Teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. 
I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This act of humble service demonstrates the power of love and kindness in leading others. God gave humanity the freedom to choose between good and evil, and Jesus respected that. 13.14 Freedom Throughout His Life this divine gift of free will is essential to our human dignity. Forcing or coercing others to act against their will denies this gift and treats them as less than fully human. God desires that we follow Him out of love and a sincere desire to do what is right, not out of fear or compulsion. Jesus respected each person's autonomy and invited them into a relationship based on love and trust. He never forced anyone to follow him, and he allowed those who rejected him to walk away freely. This model of respect for personal choice is something we should carry into our relationships with others, in our human lives, the temptation to suppress, silence or control others through fear may seem like an easy path to get what we want, but it leads to brokenness, both for us and those around us. Jesus Christ taught us a better way, one rooted in love, humility, and service. By respecting the dignity and freedom of others, we build stronger, healthier relationships and allow God's transformative love to work through us. When we follow the example of Jesus, we choose to lead not by fear or coercion, but by love and understanding. This approach not only honors the dignity of others but also brings us closer to God's heart, allowing us to live out the true meaning of loving our neighbors as ourselves. God says, I see big changes coming for you. Water An important phase in your life is ending and a new one is beginning. This could be the end of connections, harmful or outdated ways of working, or a disconnect with something that once interested or moved you. This leads to an increase in self-confidence within you. You may come to certain terms with regards to the real world. It sounds like some of you are being advised to take extra responsibility regarding your finances at this time. Failure to do so could result in serious financial emergencies. It sounds like you are highly goal-focused or you may be dealing with a goal-oriented person progress, expand, feel good about your decisions or the outcome of something. There is good news. This could be related to earthly matters like money, business, education, career, wealth, travel, health etc. You could be a student or just learning about anything as much as you can. Improve your skills or get training. It may be difficult. It requires focus, patience and commitment to access and see real results. You will receive money, fortune or favorable opportunities through inheritance or sudden chance, suddenly or by embarrassing good fortune, verification code, additional slash affirmations, powerful OARES, GY, available. Achieve financial independence. Self-support. Solo fun, freedom, you need to detox or vote. This could include drugs, sex, relationships, social, media and other unhealthy habits. Continue. Someone who throws tantrums, acts childishly, has uncontrollable anger. I'm having fits. I need to control myself. 
I don't know why I keep hearing, people say it's never gonna happen to me, but then boom, thanks for watching this video subscribe for more videos.